Marduk of the Anunnaki in Mesopotamian religion was the chief god of the city of Babylon and the national god of Babylonia. He was eventually called Bel, or Lord. Originally, he seems to have been a god of thunderstorms, no different from Shu Tu, the wind demon, the right hand of Anu. As An Anu, his father, called him from his birth, who provides grazing and drinking places, enriches the store. Referring to the Anunnaki, the water in question here would be tears. Marduk, who, with the floodstorm weapon, vanquished the detractors. And who, the gods, his fathers, rescued from distress. Truly, the son of the sun, the most radiant of the gods. In his brilliant light, may they walk forever on the people he brought forth, endowed with life. Yes, this would be necromancy, raising the dead, the gift of immortality, of course, with a twist. The service of the gods he imposed that these may have ease, creation, destruction, deliverance, and grace shall be by his command. They, them, shall look up to him. Let me arrange that for you. The Anunnaki were imposed upon humanity in a graceful form so that they can deliver destruction. I've stated many times that this creature serves the gods, not man, and undeniably the gods serve the creature. According to the complex poetic wording, Marduk is powerful, both good and evil. Marduk is a demon who has been given human form in order to disguise itself. Before I give you the meanings of Marduk, let me inform you that Zu took the role of Bell. Zu is replaced by Er. Er is replaced by Marduk. And then Marduk is simply known as Bell. The Ouroboros, the dragon eating its tail. The dragon Mushusu, Marduk's dragon, alternatively named Anzu, is Marduk's totem, Marduk's foundation stone meaning Marduk is the dragon, the lion, and the eagle, now depicted in human form, in fact representing a possessing spirit. The dragon, the lion, and the eagle, the griffin, Latin griffos, from Greek grips, grippos, related to the Hebrew cherub, which would be the origin for the word angel. The Babylonian cherub, the angel, the messenger of God. This would be the grip of evil. The mixed creature that appears similar to the griffin in Sumerian lore are called lion griffins, and Anzu appears to be their forerunner. Anzu 
and Zhu would also be the phoenix, rising from the ashes, which means from the curse. Anzu appeared from the Akkadian period, 2340 BC, to the beginning of the Neo-Babylonian Empire, 626 BC. The griffin appears to be a symbol of evil and chaos. This creature is the entity that elevates Marduk to a higher status, the Foundation Stone. In the Enuma Elish, there are eight tablets, not seven. The precursor, the first tablet, the Zu tablet, the Wisdom tablet, which is completely ignored by scholars, paves the way for Marduk to ascend to the position of the Supreme God in order to take the role of Bel from Zu. And this would be the reason Marduk has bird form. Because that is the price for stealing the role of God, which Marduk has conducted by taking the role of Zhu. The fact is that Marduk is the weapon, the great deception. But Bel is also a deception. Abzu is the personification of the watery abyss, and the House of Knowledge is their supreme god. Abzu, an obscure figure who was merged with Tiawath, but yet again, Ab means lion. And the word Tia can also mean lion. Wa from Huawa the Terrible the lion-faced terror, is cognate with pi, meaning division, and the th means split asunder. The name does not refer to the mother goddess, it refers to what happened to her, meaning that Tiawath is Tiamat, the dragon of chaos, and one of the darksome trinity. And that would be the difference between Tiawath and Tiamat. Tiamat is the darksome trinity. Within Tiamat are Mamu and Abzu. And within Marduk, we have the names Mamu and Anzu. In the minds of the people, the goddess has been defeated, but in reality, divided. Demonized and left behind, the dragon defeats itself. The worship of Bel does not end in Babylon. Bel is represented in Greek as Belos and in Latin Belos. Belos has 50 daughters. Bel Marduk has 50 names. And within the English Bel, we are told, but do we listen? Bel, a unit for comparing two power levels equal to the logarithm, to the base 10 of the ratio of the two powers, and that would be split asunder.
the meaning of Marduk, officially meaning the bull calf of Utu, and that would be why he is the son of the sun. That would also mean he is the grandson of Sin, Lord Zhu. The scribes are known to have merged Utu within Ishtar in order to give birth to the saviour of the gods. This would be how Zhu, the knowledge of demons, was born. Why and what is their purpose? We are told it is biblical. Marduk Jocularia. This may sound familiar, Marduk also meaning bitter oppression, your rebellion, downfall, subduel. This is why we need to be careful. Our bitter oppression will lead to rebellion, which leads to downfall and subduel. A great reset resetting the mind. All the serpents are gone. The words will change and they will simply be renamed. The etymology of Marduk in Hebrew. The name might be meant as a combination of the prefix, meaning place of or instrument of. For example, instrument of the gods a weapon, plus an expression of the root, RDK. Unfortunately, the root does not exist in the Hebrew of the Bible, and there is no telling whether it existed, and if it did, what it meant. I'll be the judge of that. RDK, Akkadian, R, Arabic, Aram translated as high, or elevated. Marduk may derive from the verb marad, meaning to be rebellious, or to revolt. The final calf could be ascribed to a second person feminine. In Babylon is a she a singular prominal suffix, and the whole combination might mean you rebel, or your rebellion. Rebel Lion. It may derive from the same final, meaning the feminine your, plus the word morad, which comes from the verb yarad, reminding me of the descent of Ishtar. Combined, they would mean to go down or descend. Yarad, connected to Jared and Jordan. Here, the name Marduk would mean your downfall. It may have its core in the verbs radad or rada. Ra in the Hebrew context means evil, and these words radad and rada have to do with to beat down, subdue, or have dominion over. Connected to the words sepharad and radai, here the name would mean your subdual. It may be meant as a combination of the two biliteral elements, for example the adjective ma, meaning strong or bitter, via mara. I leave you with a list of names, via the Hebrew mara, the evil merodach, mara, to make evil, cognate with Mary, 
Smyrna was a city devoted to Rome and the worship of the emperor. The worship continues under another guise. Shall come. 